How you feel? Good this morning? Hope you do. I'm trying to get on my feet again. Feel pretty good. Thankful it's as well as it is. Oh, boys, I'm pleased to see you. I don't know where you come from, but uh, I give you all the welcome I've got to offer you. And I want to tell you that I'm living on the same ground that I've lived on for 75 long years when I come here as an 18-year-old bride. I went to Washington 50 years and a little more ago. I saw all the people around there and been with the presidents. And uh, I learned a great many things up there that uh, I didn't know before. That woman was a white supremacist. Her name was Rebecca Latimer Felton. Her and her husband were some of the most prominent slave owners Sleep. in the state of Georgia. Even after the Civil War, they tried to keep their slaves. Sleep. And it's been documented that they were one of the last families to give up their slaves. Sleep. There are 1,500 row houses in Delmar Village, a seven-year-old housing development in Fallcroft, Pennsylvania. Homes in this Philadelphia suburb sell for ten to eleven thousand dollars, and the people of Fallcroft call them their dream houses. Most of Fallcroft's residents work in the technical labor field. They make between forty-five and eighty-five hundred dollars a year. They are proud of their community. Until recently, it was all white. Then, Horace Baker, his wife, and little girl moved in. Rebecca was a senator, but only for 24 hours. But her influence in state, local, and national government was seen leaps and bounds. She would literally meet with presidents to talk about women's rights and advocated against black rights. She referred to African-American people who wanted civil rights as half-trained gorillas. She also said that black people getting the right to vote would lead to the SA of white women. She was a staunch advocate for preventative lynchings, basically saying that if you feel the need to protect white women is to lynch someone, regardless of the circumstances, just do it. Here's a quote. Pause to read. She gave a speech to hundreds of farm workers in the state of Georgia, telling them that they needed to lynch more black people and that it was to protect the virtue of white women. Unless you were working for her, this woman had never met a black person that she didn't want to physically harm. She also advocated for the lost cause of the South, basically stating slavery wasn't that bad and people actually enjoyed it. In 1893, during the World Columbian Exhibition, she proposed an illustration of the slavery period, where she would hire, according to her, real colored folk to live in a replica shack, spin yarn, make baskets, and make mats. And while these people were doing it, there would be a man smiling, playing the banjo to illustrate how wonderful slavery was. This is why critical race theory needs to be taught, because all we saw from that video was a sweet old lady reminiscing about her past. But given the opportunity, she would have had me strung up on a tree for talking to her. Oh, boys, I'm pleased to see you. I don't know where you come from, but uh, I give you all the welcome I've got to offer you. 